Hello and welcome back. In our previous lecture, we looked at how you can identify different characteristics of various computing platforms and also how you can determine their impact on guest application quality attributes. And we also looked at one scenario where you could use this information to address a particular business application scenario. And we'll continue from there in this lecture and see how you can further apply this knowledge to address some of more application scenario. So let's look at another scenario here. Let's say you have an application which you have built and deployed in-house and for most of its requests it is able to meet the quality of service requirements. Let's say it is able to process the computation within uh, 3 seconds let's say. But there may be certain requests for which it might require much more uh, resources to compute the results and it may take much longer time and in which case it may impact the overall quality of service for other clients, other requests that it may be serving from different uh, clients. Let's say the application is simply a prime factorization uh, application. If you are giving it a smaller uh, set of numbers, smaller numbers, then it may be able to do the calculation very quickly, let's say. But if you ask it to factor large primes, that may take uh, much more time, let's say. And assume by throwing more processing power, you may be able to do that computation faster, let's say. From the functionality standpoint, your functionality hasn't changed. You're still trying to factor primes, but uh, you need more processing power for doing a larger factorization. So without impacting the overall quality of service, how do you handle these kind of scenarios? And another scenario where you may need special kind of uh, request handling, depending upon the context of an individual request, it could be, let's say you have to invoke, depending upon the individual request context, a special third party component, which may not be able to run in your hosted environment where you have hosted your environment in house. So you need some special, more capable computing machine, let's say, on which that application has to run, but you don't receive those requests very often. So there is no point for you to provision that kind of infrastructure in house. You just want to handle that kind of rare request on a as it happens basis. So how do you address these kind of scenarios? So if you think about it, all you need is that some ability to selectively first filter the requests that require some special handling or some more amount of resources to perform the computation required by that particular request and then transfer it to a more capable environment, more capable uh, instance of your application. So let's look at the logical architecture of the solution. You have an application where the situation is as we described in the context and to address this problem scenario, what you would do is you will build a quality of service aware request filter and then you have the rest of your applications logic. I've just shown it as one single block. It may have whatever other components your application functionality requires, but the only additional thing that you would need is that you need to build a filter, a filtering component which can determine what requests can be processed locally on the host platform itself where your application is deployed and what application requests should be forwarded or transferred selectively to a cloud-based instance of the application. So key element here is the quality of service aware request filter and then an instance of your application or the component inside a more capable environment which you can spin up on demand in a cloud-based environment. Because one of the key characteristic of cloud is, a cloud platform is, that you can provision resources on demand and you have to pay only when you use those resources. So in that sense, you are able to minimize your overheads, your costs. So you don't have to provision all the resources that your occasional requests might require over here. So you can provision application instance on a cloud-based platform and forward the request selectively to this uh, particular instance. And to achieve that, you put together a quality of service aware request filter which filters the request and forward those requests to the cloud-based instance. So that's the high level architecture of how you would implement this kind of a solution. A common example implementation could be a smartphone app where let's say you have some features which are free in your app and you can process those uh, requests locally by using the local handheld machines computing capabilities itself. But there may be some premium features or for certain types of requests uh, you don't have enough resources on your handheld machine and you want that request to be handled on a more capable machine. So you will implement that kind of a solution by using the pattern that we just looked at. 
So what you can do is you can, for example, in case of Android, you may attach a quality of service uh, filter here to the menu item. Let's say the Android app has some menu items which are uh, activated for accessing some functionality of the app. Here I have just shown the relevant uh, methods here in different classes. For example, this quality of service aware request filter will implement the on menu item click listener which is a standard uh, menu item listener available on Android which you can attach to the menu items to listen for the action events. And so whenever a menu item is clicked, the on menu item click method of this listener is uh, invoked. And since we have implemented it in this class, this filter, this filter class, the quality of service aware request filter class. So this will allow you to filter the requests and delegate them to a cloud based instance via a proxy. So it could be simply a web service, let's say, which you are trying to invoke. And that's how you are able to connect to the cloud based instance of this applications functionality. And just to summarize this particular uh, solution. So the idea is very simple. Those parts of the application which are requiring special processing, you deploy them one instance of those on a cloud based platform, which are much more resourceful and which you can spawn and start on demand and then expose a remote interface to that. And in your hosted environment, for example, on this handheld device, there you implement a request filter which will determine based on the individual requests context that whether that request can be served locally, computed locally, or if it requires more special processing, more resources, let's say, then it will delegate that request to the cloud based instance. So in that fashion, you are able to selectively transfer certain computations to the more powerful uh, instance of the application, which may be deployed on a cloud environment. Now let's look at one more scenario where you can use aspect orientation uh, paradigm at a platform level. So the problem context is something like this, that we have certain software design and implementation concerns, which apply at the coarse grained computing environment level and they cut across different applications. So one example could be that you want to monitor for some platform level events and then react to them automatically. That is in a programmatic manner, you want to be able to react to them. So as you would have guessed, one of the requirement is simply auto scaling. So you may want to determine that uh, monitor the CPU usage, let's say on some of your machines on which you have deployed some applications and after you determine that the CPU usage has been between a band of let's say 80 to 90 percent, that might indicate that you should be throwing in more resources. You can monitor the uh, CPUs by existing means, but to be able to programmatically start new instance that you cannot do on any traditional platform. So for that, you have to make use of virtualization and cloud based platforms is a ideal uh, platform to be able to implement that. And similarly, there may be other uh, monitoring abilities and uh, other uh, platform manipulation capabilities, which virtualization and cloud based platform may be offering you. So from that standpoint, you may have much more control to monitor as well as react to those events. So let's look at some high level architecture. So what you will have as a solution will look like this. So at the bottom, you see, I have shown two virtual machines. Let's say they comprise your platform where you have deployed your applications. Now you need some mechanism to monitor certain aspects of these virtual machines. And then you also want some ability to react to those events in a pre-specified manner. Let's say you may have some rules which define how you should react to different types of events. So you need few things here to achieve this solution. You will need some agent. Let's call it a aspect agent. So these terms aspect definition, aspect agent, uh, they're all coming from aspect oriented programming. If you are aware of aspect oriented programming, then you will be able to quickly relate to these terms. So, but even if you are not aware of those, just uh, assume that there is some sort of an agent here, uh, which is a piece of software, a daemon, let's say, which is deployed on this virtual machine and it monitors by using some virtualization specific APIs or facilities, which my virtualization layer offers. So this agent is able to monitor for certain events. And 
then there is another agent which again uses some virtualization layer specific APIs APIs or facilities offered by my virtualization layer that allows me to control this virtual machines in certain manner for example I may be able to add more virtual memory to it or I may be able to hot plug a new CPU to my virtual machine so this control agent is able to perform all those operations by using the facilities or APIs or services which are available to me through the virtualization layer so I'm assuming that these virtual virtual machines are deployed on uh, a particular platform it could be an infrastructure as a service uh, uh, cloud or it could be your in-house uh, plain virtualized machine a simple physical host could be there on which you might have deployed let's say VMware so you have some mechanisms to monitor these virtual machines as well as control them so you deploy these agents and there is a separate agent here a service which is reading some rules which I call aspect definitions. let's say it may be a simple XML file in some format where I specify some rules saying that let's say CPU usage on virtual machine X goes beyond 90% then you want to do something with it which may be adding new CPU or starting altogether a new virtual machine instance from a previous snapshot of that virtual machine and any other actions that are possible so the idea here is that you have certain agents which allow monitoring of the state of the virtual machine or even the application this monitoring may not be just the uh, infrastructure indicator monitoring you may also be monitoring application specific statistics by using this agent so you specify all those rules here in aspect definitions and this service is another uh, component running separately which has loaded all these definitions and by constantly receiving the monitoring data from all these virtual machines this platform aspect service is able to look at the current state of each virtual machine and react according to the definitions and how does the reaction happens that happens by virtual machine management APIs which I have shown in the dotted line so this VMM APIs they talk this VM management uh, component here this talks via VM control agents for example it may simply be let's say uh, stopping or starting a virtual machine so in that sense you are able to react to certain events for which you monitor by using these agents and they leverage the properties of virtualization layer to look at infrastructural events as well as application level events so the key points of this solution are number one we are using simply an observer pattern if you are aware of some design patterns, we are just observing so these these uh, virtual machines are nothing but observable objects in a way and this platform aspect service is observing all of these and then it is using feedback control tactic to react to the events that it has observed so that's the crux of this solution but the beauty lies in the fact that we are using we are able to use the virtualization layers capabilities to manipulate the entire platform level configuration of the application that is you are able to add more computing resources in a programmatic manner which was not possible with the physical machines like you cannot simply add a new CPU to a running machine it's not possible to do on a on a physical machine you have to switch it off and you know take the cabinet out and then put a new disk or new CPU or new module of memory whereas in case of virtual machines you can hot plug uh, uh, more memory more CPU and other resources so let's look at the example implementation of this solution let's say you have a Java based application which implements some long running tasks and we are monitoring the status of this application by using JMX APIs JMX API is Java management extension APIs by using which you can monitor the status of different Java objects in an application and we have implemented a uh, monitoring service which again uses JMX APIs to monitor the agents here the application here and this agent this monitoring agent which is running in the virtual machine along with the Java application it notifies the checkpointing service and we have some policies here which dictate that if a particular status is determined for this application we should restore the previous snapshot of that particular virtual machine and start the application from that point on so essentially we are trying to build a failure recovery mechanism here which is dependent on certain states of the application which might indicate a failure scenario 
we make use of virtualization specific uh, APIs, which in this case happen to be virtual box uh, API, management APIs, to take snapshots of this virtual machine and restore them back. And we are monitoring the application state by using specific feature which is available for Java platform that is GMX APIs to implement the in-application monitoring as well as the outside component which is making use of the virtualization layer APIs to take snapshot and restore the snapshots back. So in summary, this solution here, this example implementation is all it is trying to do is it is trying to monitor a Java application for certain statuses which can be a failure status let's say and then if a certain condition is met then it tries to restore the previous state of the virtual machine and start the application again from that point on. So let us summarize our overall lecture discussion here. So we started with looking at the, the importance of platforms characteristics and why it is important to understand those characteristics and we have already seen some of the examples. So main reason we want to identify and understand these characteristics is first we want to understand their impact on the quality attributes. And then we also can leverage those characteristics to address certain application scenarios. For example, we saw some of the scenarios where we could provide better failure recovery mechanism. In the last example, we saw how you could do a failure recovery mechanism, which is applicable at a platform level. And similarly, those characteristics, the impact of those characteristics on uh, different quality attributes of guest applications that can be used to assess the computing platforms as well on a set of QA criteria. And we'll see more details on how to do assessment in one of the subsequent lectures. And that's pretty much it for this lecture. Thank you.